Hi, welcome to the Curiouser. In this episode, I will talk about the physics behind the self balancing object. Before understanding the behavior of the self balancing object, there are two key concepts we need to know to understand the behavior. First, center of mass. Second, torque. Center of mass is the center point of distributed mass. This concept is very useful to simplify and explain the motion of rigid body. For many objects, we can easily find rough location of the center of mass by intuition. For example, the center of mass of this soccer ball is obviously at the center of a sphere. That is with the assumption that the mass distribution is symmetrical around that point. How about this dumbbell? As you guessed it, it's around here. As the object becomes symmetrical, it becomes harder to know the exact location of center of mass. For example, the brush has more weight on the head, so the center of mass might be around the head. How about this tape? The center of mass of this tape is here. The thing about center of mass is that it doesn't need to be on the object. The second concept is torque. Torque is twisting force that causes an object to rotate. One of the ways to create torque is to apply two opposite forces which are not aligned from each other. For example, if I apply force to this object like this, since the direction of the force are not aligned from each other, and the directions are opposite, the torque is created, which makes this object to rotate counterclockwise. However, if I apply the force like this, two opposite forces are aligned each other, and the torque is not created. Here is another example of creating a torque with this Allen key. The head of the Allen key is fixed at the screw on the wood. When I apply force to this direction, because Allen key is fixed at the pivot point, it will receive the reaction force to this direction from the screw. And since these two forces are not aligned from each other, this creates torque and makes it rotate clockwise. But the thing about pivot point is that as I continue to push the Allen key, the direction of reaction forces also changes to the exact opposite direction. This allows it to continuously rotate clockwise. If I apply force to this direction of the screw like this, the reaction force at the screw will be exactly aligned in the opposite direction. So in this case, the torque is not created, which prevents the Allen key from rotating. With these two concepts, we can explain why objects behave in certain way. To demonstrate that, I use this plywood. Since this is a square shape, I try to find the center of mass by drawing two diagonal lines. Then I try to check if this is actual center of mass of this wood. It turns out the actual center of mass is slightly off from the position I previously chose. So I mark the actual center of mass as red cross point. Then, I drill several holes to create pivot point that I can experiment with. I use the drill bit to hang the plywood. I make sure that the table is perpendicular to the direction of gravity first, and align my camera to the table with the help of guidelines on the LCD. I hang the plywood at the first pivot point. Now, let's look at how the forces are applied to this wood. I mentioned earlier, center of mass is very useful to simplify the motion of object. To explain the motion on this wood, we can say that the gravity is applied to the center of mass. But since the wood is hang on the pivot point, the reaction force from the drill bit will be applied to the opposite direction from the gravity, like this. As we learned earlier, since these two forces are not aligned from each other, the torque is created. But as soon as the wood rotate a little bit, when the center of mass become located at the left side of the blue line, the direction of the torque change, which is why the wood start rotating counterclockwise. And it keeps repeating this process until the two opposite forces become aligned from each other and torque is disappeared. Let's try with different pivot point. The plywood start oscillating until the gravity at the center of mass become exactly aligned to the reaction force at the pivot point, and the rotation eventually stops when they become aligned each other. In this setting, there are actually two different positions with no torque. 
The first position is this. When the center of mass is located at exactly below the pivot point. At this position, there is no torque, and it's very stable. Even if the wood is disturbed by the external force like I'm applying, the resulting torque helps it to move it back to the original location. The second position is when the center of mass is located at exactly above the pivot point. At this position, there is also no torque, but it's very unstable because even slight misalignment of the forces or the disturbance by any external force will create a torque, which will make the object even more unstable, causing it to rotate more. So the relative position of the center of mass to the pivot point is important for the stability of the object. In general, when the center of mass is located below the pivot point, it is considered to be more stable against gravity. Okay, let's look at a simpler example. Someone might ask why this plywood on the table doesn't rotate and can stay still. Why doesn't it move like this? It sounds pretty silly question. I think it's actually a good question that leads to the basic physical principle we talked about so far. First, we can say the gravity is applied from the center of mass of this wood. And there is opposite reaction force from the table, which supports the plywood. But as soon as I push it with my finger to make it fall, the bottom right of the wood becomes slightly lifted and instantly, the pivot point is created at the left bottom corner of the plywood. This of course creates a torque to put the wood back in position. So even if there are lots of vibration, this wood wouldn't fall to the left or right thanks to the wide supporting structure below center of mass. However, if you look at it from the side, it's a different story. Since the thickness of the wood is narrow, even slight push can shift the center of mass to outside between these two pivot points. And this results in the torque that makes it continuously rotate until it hits the ground. Now let's move on to more cool object like this self-balancing bird. To experiment with the self-balancing bird, I downloaded a STL file from Thingiverse and printed it with my 3D printer. They were made of 4 different pieces, so I glued them and let them dry. But when I tried it, it didn't really balance by itself. Maybe my printer's infill setting was not set properly for weight distribution of the bird. So to fix that, I had to attach some metal screws at the tip of the wings to make it work. As you can see, when I push the tail of the bird, it's very cool to watch that it can self-balance at the tip of the screw. But even cooler thing is that we can now explain why this bird object can self-balance. The secret why this bird can self-balance is because center of mass of this bird is actually at the empty region between wings and the beak. If I push the tail downward like this, the gravity at the center of mass and the reaction force from the pivot point become misaligned. As a result, the clockwise torque is created. So if we let it go, it rotates clockwise as we expected. But now, the center of mass is located on the left side of the blue line which create a torque counterclockwise. So the bird keep oscillating until these two forces are align each other, and the rotation stops when there is no torque. Cool, right? This is another cool example of self-balancing. It's a wine holder. Let's look at how this can balance by itself. First, the pivot point of this wine holder is here, and the center of mass is here. The gravity at the center of mass and the reaction force at the pivot point are perfectly align each other, which means there is no torque to make this rotate. But interesting things happen when I push this object. When I push, the pivot point actually moves to the left. Since the center of mass is the same, suddenly the torque is created, and it is this torque that rotates the object in clockwise. When it rotates, the inertia of the object makes it overshoot from the original position which create the torque in opposite direction. So after some oscillation, eventually the wine holder becomes stable at the same original location. I found it pretty amazing that the object can find its perfect balance following simple physics. By the way, 
If I push this bottle too much, this could happen. Finally, I want to finish this video by showing a common method of finding center of mass of object. We all know that one way to find the position of center of mass is by moving around the object on a finger or a thin rod like this. What are we actually doing here is to find pivot point where a torque is minimized. By doing so, we are finding the horizontal location of the center of mass, but usually, the object in this position is not stable, since center of mass is higher than the pivot point, and there is no other supporting structure to prevent it from rotating. So this is the end of my video today. I hope you enjoyed watching this, and if you liked my videos, please let me know by clicking the like button below. Since this is one of my first YouTube videos, your feedback would be very valuable for me to improve. Thanks guys and have a wonderful day!